Welcome, my friends, again um, to the uh, Clinical Education uh, Channel. I'm Saleh Abbas. I'm your clinical tutor in surgery. Um, as usual, we will focus on the big picture for this topic, which is colonic polyps. It's very important to know about polyps uh, in the uh, colon because uh, we know that uh, uh, some of them do proceed to invasive uh, malignancy. They start out as a benign neoplastic process, but they can progress into a malignant uh, uh, tumor that invades the colon and eventually metastasize. So, uh, and that's what makes the adenoma carcinoma sequence. So we're going to elaborate on that a little bit more today. We know that um, that cancers, majority of them, do arise from some sort of uh, uh, adenoma, uh, and that's in a uh, the native colon. That's normal. Uh, the disease process tends to be a little bit similar, uh, difficult in, with inflammatory bowel disease such as ulcerative colitis and uh, uh, Crohn's disease. Um, but here we are applying these uh, theory of uh, adenoma carcinoma sequence in a uh, normal uh, colon. Now we've got a few types of uh, uh, polyps or, or adenomas. They are neoplastic polyps are divided into tubular adenoma, mm. villous adenoma, and mixed. The tubular adenoma is just an overgrowth of glandular uh, tissue, while the villous adenoma has got these uh, villous fronds on the uh, surface that secrete a lot of uh, the mucus, um, and the mix that has got both varieties. Uh, it's important to differentiate between them because the risk of progressing to malignancy is higher in villous adenoma than in tubular uh, adenoma. And villous adenoma, in particular in the uh, rectum, is a, a serious uh, issue. Uh, there's another form of uh, neoplastic uh, polyp or neoplastic adenoma are this serrated polyps or sessile serrated adenoma. When you look at them uh, inside the colon, they have got a sawtooth um, appearance on the surface and they are uh, sessile, they don't have uh, stalk. They are not attached to a, a stalk and not pedunculated like the uh, tubular adenoma or the villus adenoma. There are also hyperplastic polyps, but the hyperplastic polyps are um, hyperplastic process. It's not neoplastic process. They do not prog progress to anything, and they are more common in the rectum and the sigmoid colon. Now, for the um, adenoma to go through all the stages of, of uh, uh, growth in order to reach to a stage of invasive adenocarcinoma, you need average of 10 years. Um, majority of the patients who we see the uh, polyps on are above the age of uh, uh, 50. Uh, and uh, if we take all people above the age of 50 who get a colonoscopy, a, a, a quarter of them, 25%, we will have uh, some sort of uh, adenomatous uh, polyp. So the pick rate. Uh, ideally for a colonoscopy and when we are doing this for screening or surveillance should be at about 25% of all the colonoscopies because we do expect a lot of uh, polyps uh, in uh, this type of uh, uh, population. However, in younger people you could see uh, polyps that could be sporadic, but the majority are in the uh, context of inherited mutation, which is the cancer, uh, family cancer syndrome, and most common uh, two are the uh, hereditary uh, polyposis colon cancer or the uh, adenomatous familial polyposis. The second one is the Lynch uh, syndrome, and the Lynch syndrome is also called hereditary non polyposis colorectal cancer. Um, when we say non polyposis, we don't mean they don't develop polyps, they do, but the number of polyps is scant, a small oligopolyposis. While in familial adenomatous polyposis coli, the patients tend to develop a huge number of polyps, hundreds of them, in the uh, colon, and they can start early in life. Uh, in, in patients uh, when they are teenagers, while hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer is 
a, a disease of a later onset. Uh, and it is caused by mutation in the uh, DNA mismatch repair genes. Uh, there are certain genes, that, such as the MLH1 and MSH2 and KS6, and these um, are genes are responsible for proofreading of the uh, DNA, uh, which means that when the cell divides to replace itself, it will print uh, an, uh, another copy of itself from the uh, DNA, and these genes are responsible for uh, for the proofreading to ensure that there are no mistakes uh, uh, while this process is happening. And if there are any mistakes, then it will commit uh, the cells to uh, repair it, uh, to either get repaired or the cell get uh, uh, committed to um, suicide by activation of the p53 uh, gene so it's uh, important to know about the lynch syndrome and the molecular uh, a, a problem that uh, is uh, behind that the familial porpoises coli is a uh, autosomal dominant while the uh, lynch syndrome tend to be uh, more of a multifactorial plus uh, recessive uh, genetic uh, problem I think I showed you that in the uh, past, but the, when the polyp develop, it develops uh, in the beginning, it's just a simple uh, development of uh, a collected epithelium with minor uh, dysplasia in a crypt in the uh, wall of the colon. And then it goes into an early uh, adenoma. Uh, and the early adenoma uh, is uh, depend on its size, somewhere between five millimeter to one centimeter. Once it gets to the level of about one centimeter, it will acquire more mutations and it will be what we call an advanced uh, adenoma. And the advanced adenoma is the one that has quite high grade dysplasia. And from there we move into uh, the uh, cancer in a polyp where the uh, cancer is, uh, it is invasive, but it's limited to the polyp and it still can be cured by removing the polyp. And the last stage will be the invasive cancer of the colon that has invaded the submucosa of the actual wall of the colon or beyond. Now I'll show you the uh, tubular adenoma. Here is uh, the, uh, a view from a colonoscopy and uh, we've got uh, a large polyp in here and the surgeon has uh, put a snare around the uh, polyp and that's how we remove them. The snare is just like a loop. We put it around the stalk of the uh, polyp and then we cut that with the snare either with diathermy or without, depend on the size of the polyps. So that's a typical uh, large uh, tubular adenoma of the uh, colon. Now this one is large in size, so the probability of it having invasive cancer is about 50% uh, or so. When we talk about villus adenoma, uh, we're looking at um, an adenoma that has good uh, cauliflower appearance to the uh, surface with all these um, fronds uh, uh, that are uh, projecting from the uh, surface like microscopically visible uh, villi. Uh, and uh, that's that why it's called a villus adenoma. Now, villus adenoma is more uh, serious diagnosis because the risk of progressing into cancer is higher than uh, the uh, uh, tubular adenoma. Now, hyperplastic adenomas, I mentioned about them before, they are hyperplastic uh, lesions. They occur most often in the col and the rectum and the sigmoid, and uh, they are benign. They have no consequences, and they do not develop uh, into uh, cancer on their own. Here's a colonoscopy appearance, and uh, um, the site here is the right colon, and you could see a sessile polyp which has got no pedicle, and it is typical for sessile serrated adenoma. Uh, again, the sessile serrated adenoma is a pre-malignant condition where it can acquire further mutations and lead to cancer of the colon. They tend to be small and they can easily uh, be uh, mixed, and it is estimated that up to 6% of people over the age of 50 who have uh, uh, colonoscopy 
we uh, should be able to find a serrated polyp. So it's about 60% of the uh, secreting people by colonoscopy. And if we take, if we find them, we remove them and we put the patients on a program of uh, surveillance so often to come back and have a colonoscopy to ensure they do not generate any further polyps. There's a syndrome, another uh, cancer syndrome, it's called uh, uh, serrated polyposis uh, syndrome. Now, this has got certain criteria to it, and the criteria are the following three. Um, to be able to uh, call the patient has got sessile uh, uh, serrated polyposis uh, syndrome, they must have uh, 20 or more serrated polyps anywhere in the colon. They don't have to be in any part of the colon. So if the patient at one time uh, we scoped them and we found so many of those polyps uh, uh, up to 20 or more, then the patient definitely have a uh, familial uh, syndrome, which is separated sessile polyp. It has implication to the, sub, uh, to the siblings and the offsprings who uh, might have inherited the uh, uh, faulty gene. Another possibility is that sometimes patients could have that polyp without having a large number of polyps. If they have um, four, five or more polyps, so the minimal five or more of sessile serrated polyps uh, located proximal to the sigmoid colon, and we have to have two of them at least a centimeter or large. So minimal five uh, polyps, a minimal two of them, one centimeter and above, then they fit the sessile serrated polyposis syndrome, where it has got long-term implication to the patients and their families who should be uh, screened for uh, these polyps to prevent cancer. There is another category who will fit into that. If you've got a family member of uh, uh, someone who has been diagnosed with uh, serrated polyposis uh, syndrome, uh, the presence of any serrated polyp, just uh, even a single polyp uh, anywhere in the colon will make the patient fit uh, the last criteria of uh, being a part of the family that have sessile serrated polyposis uh, syndrome. Uh, it's a small uh, group of patients who uh, uh, develop colon cancer, but it, uh, nevertheless it is an important group and it is relatively a, a recent uh, discovery. I'd love to um, show you the mutations that, that happen. So as we said in familial polyposis coli, the APC gene is the uh, mutant gene that will, uh, we will require that mutation. It's autosomal dominant uh, and uh, will be transmitted with a high uh, uh, degree of uh, presentation in the uh, siblings and the uh, offsprings and um, uh, other than the, the APC there will be some other proto-oncogenes that could initiate the tumor. Patient with Lynch syndrome they have the uh, mismatch repair uh, genes. Mutation of one of them can lead to uh, cancer of the uh, colon and uh, the mismatch repair genes, the DNA mismatch repair genes uh, our tumor suppressor, and also they are called the care, the caretaker of the entire genome because they look after the genome to ensure fidelity during the process of reproduction and um, replication of the uh, DNA. Other mutation that we will uh, require, uh, and I think I have mentioned that before, uh, after the uh, APC mutation, and that's in sporadic cancer, then uh, we get APC gene mutated in a sporadic uh, and a somatic event. Uh, then that will lead to formation of a, uh, an early uh, adenoma. Keras mutation, that will lead to intermediate adenoma. And then we get the deleted in coral cancer. Uh, and that will lead to uh, advanced uh, uh, adenoma. Uh, sometimes the deleted in coral cancer is also called the SMAD4 um, as an, or another form of deleted in coral cancer, which mutation of either of those will lead to advanced adenoma or early malignancy. Once you get the P53 mutation, then the lesion is 
uh, cancers. So we require a series of uh, mutations uh, for the colon cancer to uh, appear. And it's very important to know that because uh, the adenoma carcinoma sequence has been the best shown model for carcinogenesis in the human being, which is applicable to a variety of other organs in the body or a variety of other cancers in different uh, forms. Um, and that started, how did we know about the adenoma carcinoma sequence that actually started uh, by epidemiologic, ep epidemiological uh, evidence? Um, and uh, the factors that have been uh, uh, gathered uh, that let us think that the adenoma is the precursor for the cancer, uh, our few uh, epidemiologic observations. Number one, large adenomas are more likely to have cancer. If you have invasive colon cancer, almost certainly there will be a residual benign adenoma in the specimen. So both ways. Also direct observation. I'm not sure how they did that, but uh, it has been mentioned that uh, uh, there are uh, studies where the uh, polyps were left alone and observed uh, with ongoing uh, colonoscopies and eventually they developed into uh, malignancy. Uh, not sure about the ethics around that or how it was um, conducted in fact, but there is a direct observation of the change of adenoma to carcinoma. Adenomas are uh, more frequent also in people who have colon cancer. Very often when you have someone with colon cancer, you do colonoscopy, you find one or two adenomatous polyps. This is the other observation. The other important observation is that patients with adenoma, they have high risk of colorectal cancer, and that's based on people who had previous colonoscopy, had adenoma removed, and then they lost to follow up or didn't have further surveillance, and they turned up uh, 10 years or later with colon cancer. We know that phenomena definitely exists. So this is another corroborating factor to the uh, adenoma carcinoma uh, sequence uh, theory. Uh, another factor is the removal of polyps. We know if you remove the polyps, you protect the patient from colon cancer. You bring a virtual close to zero. Um, a lot of the observations also uh, were started on patients with hereditary colon cancer, the familial adenomatous polyposis uh, coli. And um, these patients have uh, the prevalence of developing a huge number of uh, polyps in their colon. Also, the hereditary non polyposis colon cancer, they develop, it is oligopolyps rather than uh, multiple uh, polyps. An important point also um, in epidemiology, the peak age for having polyps is the age of 50, and the peak age for having colon cancer is 60. So there is a 10-year lag between the uh, finding of the uh, adenoma and the finding of the uh, carcinoma, which means that uh, uh, definitely the adenoma carcinoma sequence is uh, valid and uh, the uh, process takes about uh, uh, 10 years for the uh, cancer to develop. Uh, and uh, so these are the stages where we uh, more or less the same thing that uh, tells you what happened with each gene mutation from normal epithelium with AQC mutation to dysplastic uh, aberrant crypt Kairos mutation with early uh, leads to early adenoma, and the intermediate adenoma, the one that has growth smat for all the deleted in colon cancer, and um, uh, the late adenoma to carcinoma, uh, that would be the P53 mutation. Now, P53 is the um, uh, the uh, gene that controls um, apoptosis and individual cell. Uh, death, and it, and it acts as a cancer suppressor gene. One more thing I uh, was going to show you today um, is what we call cancer in a polyp syndrome. Uh, now, sometimes you remove a polyp and you find cancer in it, and uh, uh, in order to be able to deal with that, uh, the, uh, someone called Haggett, uh, 
and those groups have developed a classification for the uh, cancer in the polyps. This means that the cancer is limited to the polyp, it hasn't gone into the wall of the bowel, and it has got uh, four stages. Uh, now, stage zero is intra intramucosal carcinoma or severe dysplasia. So that is uh, stage zero. Uh, but here we'll, stage, we'll, we'll start with stage one, and stage one when the um, cancer invades the muscularis mucosae. This layer is the muscularis mucosae inside the uh, polyp. So this has invaded the muscularis mucosae. Level one. Level 2 goes to the neck of the uh, polyp, but hasn't reached the stalk or the pedicle, just in there. Level 3 it has invaded the stalk, reached to the level of the stalk. The stalk is fibro, uh, vascular, uh, lymphatic, and connective tissue uh, component of the polyp. And in here it is stage 4 where it has invaded the uh, submucosa of the uh, colon, and that would uh, be more or less equivalent to T1 uh, in the TNM cl classification of colon cancer. So that's the classification. Majority of the, uh, so all the three levels are um, cured usually by colonoscopy, unless there is a, a, a large polyp and there is some element to it, and we worry about that, then they might need some form of a colectomy. And um, if it has invaded the mucosa, then um, it's a, a bit controversial. Uh, if the uh, margin is free, you could uh, watch and do uh, surveillance colonoscopies. Some surgeons are more aggressive and they will thought that if it has reached this level, it means that it is stage one colon cancer and they will have to have an operation. Thank you very much for uh, sticking uh, with me to the end of the uh, video and I hope I will uh, keep you uh, posted uh, about a variety of uh, issues in uh, general surgery. Um, if you guys uh, have any question or you need uh, a certain topic uh, uh, to be uh, discussed again or a new topic, I'm more than happy to consider your uh, suggestion and I will see you in the future.